the seat open? Please. I heard you won your ship playing. Cards. It's true. Fastest in the galaxy. But my ship isn't for everyone. On May 25th, you got what it takes? There's only one way to find out. Whoa, 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 Han. Slow down. You might want to quit while you're ahead. You might want to quit while you're behind. <laughs> Solo, a Star Wars story. Ready PG-13. Get ready. We're at Cannes. First day of international publicity for Solo. We just coming from our big screening, which was thrilling. It's really nice. It's nice to promote a film in such a beautiful place, and it's lovely to kind of get together again with the crew and the cast. It's an action ride. like. Tonight was the first night I could really, really watch it, and I loved it. Eight-year-old me was like, this is great. I want to buckle up, baby. I'm just so blown away by the reaction tonight. It's got so much heart and soul, this film. It's got a lot of humor in it. Uh, it's got your old uh, favorites, uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca. The thing I mainly hope is just that people have a great time. You get to watch this guy sort of learn these lessons and slowly turn into the character we all know and love. It's so fun. It's so exciting. It's such a great kind of adventure yarn. I got a really good feeling about this. You see, how'd you guys let me beat you on that one? Come on. There's no liars in this game. Just players. The seat taken? Nobody's in the seat and I ain't taken, friend. So this is uh, Sabak. 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 Got it. You played before? A couple times, yeah. Captain Lindo Karazi. On solo. Looks like you're uh, having a good day. I'm a lucky guy. Can I ask you a question, Captain Calrissian? Anything, Han? It's Han, but that's okay. I heard a uh, story about you. I was wondering if it's true. Everything you've heard about me is true. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's it's really fun, you know. It's it's he's a character that there's so much to do and there's such humor and different facets to him. Yeah, the way I went about it was pretty much to watch all the um, watch all the uh, original movies, kind of er, very early on, and try to absorb as much as I could of the world and of his performance and things like that. And then, um, you know, we'll kind of forget about that. So that by the time you're doing the actual movie, you're just doing the, your part. Well, I think, first of all, one thing about this movie is that even if it wasn't a Star Wars movie, it still is such a fun adventure tale. And I think the thing I mainly hope is just that people have, have a great time, that it's really fun, and that people, you know, enjoy the ride. I mean, when I watched it tonight, I could really have seen it a few times now. And this was the first time I felt like I could really just enjoy the movie. And it's such a, it's so fun, it's so exciting, and so, it's such a great kind of adventure yarn, you know. Well, I think, I think it's a lot of fun, and I think it's very funny. I think you get to kind of watch, one of the great things about the movie is you get to watch, you know, this guy sort of learn these lessons and slowly turn into uh, the character we all know and love. And so that's, that's just a very, very fun thing to watch. Divert auxiliary power to the rear deflector shield. We definitely do. Since when do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great. Chewie, get in. I'll help Ando.
It's really hard to put into words. Something that's bigger than you, and you know it's before you, and you know it's after you too. So it feels very, um, feels life changing to be honest. Like, you know, and I, I know just how people treat me differently now. It's, it's, um, it's a very different thing. Very lighthearted. I, I think the, the 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 new Star Wars is tend to be, you know, like heavier because they deal with heavier themes. And I think this is like at the end of the day, a very. It's a Star Wars like coming of age story, you know. It's like a, just about a person learning to be a person, and, you know. And I and I think we all like the characters already. Everybody knows that, so it's a lot more fun. It's like it's sillier, it has some more fun jokes, but it's also just an action ride. Like tonight was the first night I could really, really watch it, and I loved it. Like I, I was like eight-year-old me was like, this is this is great, you know. So I, I'm very happy. I just hope they enjoy, they have a good summer movie, you know, like I, I, I remember being young and, and, you know, having nothing to do in the summer and then being like excited about three films or two films that are coming out. And I feel like this movie solidifies itself as one of those movies. It's like if I had an eight-year-old son, I would bring him to this, you know, immediately. If I had an eight-year-old daughter, I feel like this movie's perfect for her. Like, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's a movie you can really enjoy with a with kids and enjoy it just as much and I, I, I haven't seen movies like that in a while so I appreciate it. You might wanna buckle up baby. You're off to something. Is it revenge? Money? Or is it something else? If you come with us, you're in this life for good. Why not? Solo, a Star Wars story. I think this movie is is sort of a people people rightly shouldn't shouldn't know too much about it, but it, it's an adventure story and which flew down very well uh, today with the audience. I thought I thought that it's just like the mu this movie is a popcorn fil film. Uh, it's got a lot of humor in it. Uh, it's got your old uh, favorites, uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca, how they met, how they uh, became uh, uh, to know each other, and uh, no one, no one knows how that went down. So uh, uh, it's, it was very exciting to see uh, how people reacted to all of it, and uh, it was a sizzling night for sure. I think, I, well, as I said, you're going to see well, how that uh, special relationship began, and uh, let me tell you, it wasn't the start. Uh, it wasn't that uh, rosy. Uh, for sure, and uh, yeah, because uh, Han and Chewbacca, they're at a very much different point in their lives than, than what we've come to know, and uh, we, we're we're going to see some some of that uh, old uh, <laughs> back and forth between those two for sure. It's a, it's a dream of mine. It's an unvoiced dream. I could never have uh, thought about uh, inheriting this kind of opportunity and to step into the shoes that Peter Mayhew created uh, with his uh, performance of Chewbacca in the original trilogy. And I'm 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 beyond joy, beyond uh, like beyond proud to 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 uh, carry on the mantle and bring people uh, each and every time they they ask uh, the Chewbacca that people know and love. I think the people who, who love Star Wars go in there and just, they, they, they're going to be treated so well. And those who don't know Star Wars at all, they can still go see this film because it's an adventure film and it's full of fun, spontaneous uh, uh, trips to the unknown. And uh, we're going to see that familiar galaxy or less familiar galaxy uh, turned up in ways that we, don't, we never expected. Big shot gangster putting together crew. You need my top lieutenant. <laughs> On May 25th. All right, people, do not improvise. What's the plan? So glad we took this job. Whoa, whoa, ahead. Mind we quit while you're ahead? When have I ever steered you wrong? <laughs> Don't listen to him. <laughs> Solo, a Star Wars Well, it's a relief because a very challenging movie made under difficult circumstances. Uh, but but people, you know, everybody involved just has so much belief in this uh, story of young Han Solo. And we're willing to give everything that they had. And so far, the reactions have been just great. And we hope uh, people will come see it on the 25th. Well, I mean, I think that audiences, uh, are, you know, are sort of broadening their expectations of the kinds of the range of, of, uh, of relationships uh, and cast members, and 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 it's a, you know, it's a, it's much more of a global um, uh, brand 
now Star Wars. The story is international. For that reason, it needs to uh, represent the whole world a little bit more, uh, while still staying true to the essence of what Star Wars is. But Star Wars was, was always that. This is the, I think, maybe the first movie in a long time that you really didn't have, you don't have to have seen the others in order to be able to totally lose yourself in this movie and appreciate it and not miss anything. Uh, it just happens, um, that happens to me because of the, the, the specific time when this, when, this, uh, when this story takes place. That said, um, if you are a fan, I hope you'll see a lot of respect for the fans and, and um, without pandering but a lot of respectful acknowledgement of their, uh, of uh, the details that they have a real grasp of. And so I hope it works for both, but, you know, newcomers and, and the, uh, and the diehard fans. I think in many ways Han is the, is the very most relatable, closest to an earthling uh, in, in, in the galaxy. Um, his, um, you know, he's the paradoxes. He's good, but he also feels sometimes makes the wrong choices. Uh, he's uh, he 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 wants to be heroic. Sometimes he's not as smart as he should be. Uh, and those those flaws, um, along with his virtues, make him so appealing and so relatable to all of us humans here on Earth. I'm gonna be a pilot, best in the galaxy. <laughs> I like this kid. Heard about a job. Big shot gangster putting together a crew. We need an incredibly fast ship and a brilliant pilot. We've got the pilot. Punch it! The real question is who's going to be my co pilot? Solo, a Star Wars story. They anticipate your opponent. No, you can't wipe them off. They're holograms. It's amazing. You know, I'm obviously from Europe and we had the, the premiere in LA. That was really exciting. And this was a big deal for me, coming kind of homeward bound. And um, just the fact that it's a film which appeals internationally is really, it's, 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 it's wonderful. You know, and it's a huge, huge movie. And so much went into it, so much time, so much labor, so much love. And, the fact that it is as good as it is, it really is, it's got so much heart and soul this film, so it, it was worth it, and it's, it's not often you can say that about a really massive movie, it really was worth it. My hopes for it are also my beliefs that it will endure, you know, films come and go, they, don't, they have a, a shelf life like anything else, but I feel like what's one of the wonderful things about being part of this, you know, sort of royal lineage of, of movies is that People do come back to them again and again and again, just by you know extension of the fact that they're part of the whole sequence of films. So that's really amazing that it will sort of cross generations and be enjoyed long into the future. That's cool. I've been running scams on the streets since I was ten. Kicked out of the flight academy for having a mind of my own. I'm gonna be a pilot. Best in the galaxy. Hey kid, I'm putting together a crew. You in? That's yes. I might be the only person. Who knows? What you really are. What's that? Get ready. Thought we were in trouble there for a second, but it's fine. We're fine. The Star Wars universe that we see in Solo was different from anything else that we've seen in any previous Star Wars movies. The Empire controls everything. Everyone is struggling to survive, but we discover this incredibly free spirit. We're meeting Han right before he becomes the Han that we know. He 
you end up getting to see how this guy got to be the way he is. It's all part of this great expansion of the Han Solo world. It's a rite of passage. You look good. The tests he needs to face, the challenges he has to endure to become Han Solo. <laughs> Those first encounters with Chewbacca. You're gonna need a nickname, because I ain't saying that every time. With the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> with Lando Calrissian. Did you win your ship playing cards? I like this kid. They're in this movie. I'm a driver. A great pilot. <laughs> he's the most exciting character in the saga for me. You don't know what he's gonna do. I'm a terrible person. He's reckless. He does these stupid things that should never work. And they do. I'm fine! And he does it with bravado. I might be the only person who knows what you really are. What's that? Big shot gangster putting together crew. You in? I waited a long time for a shot like this. We need a ship. The Millennium Falcon. She needs a particular type of pilot. Watch it! These people, not your friends. There's a lesson to be learned here. I don't think I'm ever gonna learn. Hey, I'm Donald Glover, and this is the Millennium Falcon. Come on, let me show you around. These are the living quarters. One of my favorite places on the ship. Everything's patent leather. Uh, we got the sound system. It's pretty great. You don't want to touch any of this. Up here, we have the guest quarters. Pretty awesome space. Over here, we have one of my favorite places on the ship, food and coffee bar. Make you a drink if you want, you know? Eh? Eh? Mm. This ship has probably never looked better than when Lando kind of had it. Ta-da! This is where the magic happens. So we got everything here. These pillows are made from actual Kajak hair. That's not easy to get. Listen to some tunes if I want to. But I think the coolest part of this entire ship is in here. The cape room. I got every cape, okay? I got an everyday cape. Sister's wedding cape. Intergalactic President's Day cape. This is just if someone gets cold. I got everything you could probably ever ask for in here. And here is the cockpit. And here we are in the cockpit. You made it. Over here we have the sliders, light up buttons. But I think the coolest part of the ship has to be the hyperdrive. And you get into hyperdrive like this. I never get tired of that. Does the seat open? Please. I heard you won your ship playing cards. It's true. Fastest in the galaxy. But my ship isn't for everyone. On May 25th. You got what it takes? There's only one way to find that. Whoa, 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 Han. Slow down. Might want to quit while you're ahead. You might want to quit while you're behind. <laughs> Solo, a Star Wars. Thing. I just was, you know... Over the moon. I mean, I was ecstatic. It's really special, and it's really special to be a part of a franchise that has so much heart and that means so much to people and to get to play a character that has so much dimension in that universe. Um, it's Yeah, it was wonderful. Wookiees are funny. Like, just being around Wookiees is funny and the way they are. And Jonas playing Chewie, who was so good at playing Chewie, is just funny. He's just anything he does in the suit is funny, and he really knows how to use the suit to its best comic effect. Like any time he'll dance in it and jump and do push-ups and rap and lots of stuff. One of my favorite things about the movie is how much time you spend in the ship and really getting into the Falcon, I think, in a way that you've never seen before. You really get to know what it's like in the cockpit. You see a lot of, I th think you see geography inside the ship that you haven't seen before. You're, we're flying 
for a good long section of the movie um, during the Kessel Run, and you see a lot of maneuvers and a lot of adventures with the ship that I think um, are are a step further than you've ever seen in a Star Wars movie. He is kind of an outlaw in certain ways, and uh, in a, and he's uh, and he's yeah he's just a blast to work with, like really fun to work with, and we had a really good time. And I think that relationship is really special to Han, and he learns a lot from it, and ultimately learns um, how much he wants to be like this guy, and maybe how he wants to be different from this guy, which is I think true of meeting people who you uh, admire. What makes Kira a dynamic character involves a lot of mystery. And uh, I think Amelia's filled that that mysteriousness with a lot of detail and a lot of a lot of specificity so that it it feels like you don't quite know what she's thinking. You don't quite know what's going on with her, and either does Han, and that's what keeps the tension going. and um, and and I think she also is just kind of, She's just very evocative on screen. She's just very compelling to watch and very funny and has a great kind of sense of humor. And our banter in the movie is really wonderful. L3 is a kind of, uh, is really invested in droids' rights and making sure that droids are treated better in the galaxy. And L3 is um, very funny and she's played by uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who's just hilarious. And Phoebe improvised a lot and did a lot of just, I mean, she's just a really wonderful comedic talent and was cracking us up all the time. Yeah, she's great. I'm going to be a pilot. Best in the galaxy. Heard about a job. Big shot gangster putting together a crew. Who are these guys? On solo. Lando Carrizo. Whoa, is that a Wookiee? On May 25th. If you come with us, you're in this life for good. You in? That's yes. Solo, a Star Wars story. I think people like Lando because, uh, you know, it's always nice to meet people in life who have flair and style. Like, you know, it's a, it's a, a lot of people don't have time for flair and style now, especially nowadays. I think it's a lot of work to, to put that much style into your everyday life. You have to really care about things. And I think, and it shows, uh, it shows that uh, you care about perception and, and life in a different way. And a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people have to really hurry up and just get to the thing. And I think he believes in, I think there's something about him that's really graceful. Alden plays him kind of still figuring things out and that's so endearing. And that's so, it, it's such a, a great part. It's cool to see, uh, you know, this character still figuring it out and having, you know, wide eyes about all of like the kind of nastiness of the world and how, you know, rough it can be. And he plays it so well. Like I'm, I'm truly like, it's really cool to, uh, to see him play it. And I'm, I'm really kind of taken aback every time we do a scene together. Cause like, He's he's really just I don't know he's been in it very focused and yeah it's like it's a cool our, our actual friendship has grown with the friendship on screen which is really great it's reminiscent of Empire Strikes Back where they don't trust each other but they have a common goal you know they have a common goal and they you know they they have friends in common and they have people they care about and you know I think their relationship is kind of the relationship that ex exists in the world that a lot of stories don't tend to touch, which is why I, I, I think I like their relationship so much, which is like, we're, <laughs> we're acquaintances that, that care about each other. But at the end of the day, we're like, we're also in competition a little bit, which I think is uh, something complex, but also very real. I think that's a very real like uh, relationship. There's this kind of self-made droid uh, named L3, who is a, a droid that's kind of fixed herself up and made herself into what she wanted to be, um, and is like really, and really believes in like droid rights and like you know, in really um, droids 
taking control of their sentient you know nature and and he and she has like a really great navigational uh, system and they're friends like they're really close i think he just has a lot of respect for uh, for someone who's been able to live the lifestyle that he's trying to kind of make prim and proper you know i, I think the bandit lifestyle the almost like space pirate space cowboy lifestyle is not very pretty but um I think Lando wants it to be romanticized a little bit and have it be, you know, cool and smooth and, and look better than it actually is, which means you lose friends and you gain friends and some, some, some of your friends are enemies and will turn you in as soon as they'll shake your hand. You know, I, I, I think he's, I think he admires Beckett because Beckett survived, has survived for a long time doing that. I grew up on it, so it's, it, it is kind of, it's, it's really exciting to be on, on something like this and also have the, the knowledge there. Like I didn't have to do any research. I didn't have to read about it. I didn't know, like, I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, Dagobah system, <laughs> you know, oh yeah, this is, oh, this is the scene where he loses the, like, I, I know that knowledge is in my head already. And it's, it's not even about me geeking out, but it's just like, it's just nice to have something that's already imprinted in your DNA. You know, and you can just live it. Three, two, now! So what's your name anyway? Hey, kid, it's a big shot gangster. He's putting together a crew. You think everything sounds like a bad idea? If you come with me, you're in this life for good. I waited a long time for a shot like this. Oh. I got a really good feeling about this. Han and Kira are incredibly close. And when we join them, when we crash into their existence, we see them for the first time kind of testing the waters at that teenage age um, for, for whether it's more than just friends. And at a particular moment, we get ripped apart. He just is such an opportunist and he's so bullshy in, in the kind of, he's like the ultimate fake it till you make it, at this point in the story anyway, of like, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just gonna do it and then I'm gonna prove you that I could do it, not only to you, but also to myself. And I feel like that is, um, incredibly endearing. When they find each other, Han and Chewie both individually are these kind of lost souls. And the way that they meet, I think is genius. It's inspired. It's like, when I was reading the script, I got so excited because it's perfect. And they're fighting each other. And then they kind of, that, it, that there's always this sort of rivalry between them. There's always this kind of, they never quite fully trust each other. And then hopefully by the end of our movie, you'll see that it's this friendship that will last forever and ever. It's kind of incredible. The amount of work that he's put into this role has been staggering. And, um, and I think it shows. Uh, I think he's, he brings this kind of, <laughs> it sort of doesn't have a word. It's like the Han Solo, like, <laughs> kind of, you know what I mean? He's got that like, he brings that swagger. He brings that kind of, that energy and it just sort of comes to him for free and it's really fun. It's really fun to see Alden kind of when he's backpedaling as Han or when he's kind of trying to figure stuff out and then when he nails it and he does really well and it's kind of, he's got that endearing quality about him. He's just so cool and it makes so much sense because Lando is so cool. Or Lando thinks Lando is so cool. But Donald's comic timing is like second to none. It's kind of, incre it's, it's an incredible thing. And when you have someone who, because obviously Donald is like, incredibly skilled and can do a lot of things. Um, so he um, is, it's been really fascinating actually working with Donald Glover and um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge because both are people who make their own shows and write and produce and direct themselves. So it's really, for me as an actor, it's been incredibly eye-opening because they have, they have a view on it that you don't normally see from actors. Which has been really great and kind of, just interesting and, and adds a kind of fresh new dynamic to this ensemble and to just, just to the environment that you're kind of working in. 
but yeah, Donald has um, Donald has taken a beloved character and seemingly done it with like he's just glided right on in, with no difficulties at all. It's a real band of like joyful people. It's been a real treat working with everyone. But um, but Woody, <laughs> Woody is just exactly as his character. <laughs> he's so funny. And so he's like, he's like, you know, he takes care of us all. He's like the, he just kind of, <laughs> he's just, he's just very funny and great to work with. He's amazing to work with. He's very, um, uh, his, his ability to like riff on stuff in the moment is, is incredible. Big shot gangster putting together crew. You in? I waited a long time for a shot like this. What are you doing with Harry and the boy? We need a ship. The Millennium Falcon. Every ship isn't for everyone. She needs a particular type of pilot. You done flirting? These people are not your friends. There's a lesson to be learned here. I got a really good feeling about this. I think the the allure to Han Solo in the Star Wars films is that he's like uh, he's like every one of us, uh, skeptical. He's brutally honest, and he's uh, but also out for his own interest. So and Chewie being his sidekick, sort of just like <laughs> being the soundboard, uh, like the bounce board for his uh, ruthless honesty, uh, is a very funny mix. I think, and it's uh, it's so much fun to see them work to, working together and uh, and going on all of these adventures. In the surface, the film is about all these adventures that these uh, Han and Chewie go on together. Not yet as, as uh, friends for life, but as you know, strangers on a on a on a weird job, and then things happen, and they end up, you know having to decide whether to uh, join together for good and it's it's been uh, it's been a, a trip of discovery to find you know between me and me and Alden you know find those uh, things that make up the necessary ladders that lead to those uh, that uh, un un unite unifying moment so it's been very interesting to try to try to create that. I think what's great about Amelia is she she's so approachable that she she can just be carry all this, you know, amazing success that she's had and then just like be her own self and just be jamming to a song, you know, in a in a <laughs> between takes and she just takes it so uh, effortlessly. Uh, her, her she's so good at what she does. That it's it's really it's really been a, a joy to watch her work. When it comes to Donald, he's 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 so good in in the music he makes, in the acting that he does, and in, in the ideas that he has. That it's just like been a breath of fresh air to 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 get to work with him on the scenes because he's his comic timing is so good and his. Uh, all all the stories that he tells are always so interesting. Everybody's always listening, and he he's such a not only a great actor but also such a great person that it's it's like really really privileged to uh, get to work with him as well. Didn't plan on it being so soon. Of course, now you've got a problem. Big problem. You happen to notice that freighter down there? You know what's on it? About 30 hired guns. All I gotta do is give them the signal, you're surrounded.
Sorry. Do, do your thing. It was a irresistible opportunity, you know, both right. as just a screenwriter who who was getting the opportunity to write the Han Solo character with with one of the guys that had originated it, and with with Larry, you know, because he's my dad, and it was a it was an experience that we both had always sort of been curious about having together. Yes. And it seemed like a, a fun one to do it with. And we didn't know how it would go. It's yeah. Probably the hardest person to work with is your son. Yes, or your father. Uh, yeah, or your father. Yeah. And, and, but what you say is interesting because the whole saga yeah. is about fathers and sons and generations yeah. and daughters. And, yeah. Um, so it fits right in kind of thematically working together. Yes. Their friendship... <clears throat> is in some ways the deepest of anything in the saga. It's certainly deeper than Han ever had with Luke, you know, and um, he's in love with Leia, but that doesn't work out in the first trilogy. <laughs> and um, But the one who's always there is Chewie. And I wanted to see, that seemed the most intriguing part. How did they get together? How did they learn to trust each other since the movies? Very much about trust. And Larry had said to me early on that he saw that relationship as sort of a, a, a Hepburn and Tracy kind of <laughs> bromance. And it always struck us as sort of obvious if that was where it was going, that it would, that it would start with some conflict and that it would sort of build around that, you know, and because all the great love stories have conflict. So we always thought that there would be some, some friction in the early part of their story. Think. You want to make that move. You want to make that move. You made that move. Okay. I guess I'll have to destroy that little guy. Somehow I never get bored with winning. You, know, you can't wipe them off. They're holograms. Hey, hey, hey. Chewy, relax. Hey, try to compose yourself. Look, all you got to do is think a few moves ahead, anticipate your opponent. There's a lesson to be learned here. He's a sort of mercurial, anarchic, sociopath, gangster, you know. I think they talk about these, um, the script talks about these scrum rats, you know, uh, of which Han and, and Kira are um, these sort of orphan street kids. And I think that's who Dryden was. And now he is, you know, he's a boss. And, uh, and a bit of a monster, but so much fun to play. In some regard, the film is all about the people that make Han who he is. Uh, there's sort of, uh, as this sort of burgeoning young criminal, <laughs> right? And so he meets a bunch of people that he learns a bunch of really bad lessons from. But his heart is so big that he always comes back, right? I mean, that's, that's Han. Okay, you know, he at the last minute he just can't be the bad guy. And that's what's delicious about Han. So, uh, and I uh, and I think that Dryden sees that weakness. I was kind of intimidated to meet him actually. He was really personable and lovely and charming, and he he is helped a lot by the fact that the script has is it feels like Han. It's got the tone right, but he's just got that he really understands who Han is, you know? He really has got that orphan boy who wants to be, the, he wants to be a, a bad lad, but just, just has a heart of gold. And he's just, he's really got it, you know? And, um, and he's lovely to work with and really inventive and incredibly well prepared. I'm going to be a pilot, best in the galaxy. <laughs> I like this kid. Heard about a job, big shot gangster putting together a crew. We need an incredibly fast ship and a brilliant pilot. We've got the pilot. Punch it! The real question is, who's going to be my co-pilot? Solo, a Star Wars story. They anticipate your opponent. No, you can't wipe them off, they're holograms. I love L3 because she is a, uh, she's a revolutionary and she's um, a feminist and she is fighting for the rights of her, her people. 
And she's completely fearless about that. And even though she has a revelation halfway through the film that kind of galvanizes her even more, she's a real fighter. And I think, um, I think that's, that typifies a lot of the characters. A lot of them are fighters for whatever they believe in. And I really support L3's cause. There's so much cool about Lando that you can't fake. And Donald is, however much, you know, you can try and convince yourself he's not, he is the coolest man in the world. <laughs> and I think he brings that, he, he brings that cool to Lando with such an effortlessness, but also he's, um, there's so much irony in his performance that you can see, um, that you can see his own humor come through. It's very, again, you know, it's very funny and it's heightened because of this world, but it's also really real. All the actors on this have really brought a real humanity and, and uh, emotional journey to it. I think the emotional impact of this film is going to surprise people. I think because it's the origin story of somebody who is uh, known and loved for being quite um, dismissive of people and being quite distant emotionally. Um, I think this film is really about friendships and about love and about when you find somebody who's a true par partner uh, in crime or in whatever. But I think it's I think it's really about partnerships rather than flying solo. Good going on! We need to divert auxiliary power to the rear deflector shield. We definitely do. When do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great. Chewie, get in. I'll help Lando. Han is somebody who's, who's a kind of a paradox. On the one hand, he's lived a very tough life and he knows a lot about 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 the streets, about about taking action, taking things into his own hands, and he's learned to live by his his wits, and um, you know, and his uh, and his skills in in the middle of a of, of a conflict, uh, and yet, whether he likes it or not, there is fundamental goodness in him. He'd like to <laughs> he'd like to erase it. He'd, 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 he'd like to grow out of it. Um, you know, as we know, he, he, never, he, ne he never can, he never will. Um, so, of course, this story deals with that internal tug of war in ways that are, um, I think, um, entertaining and, and, and also uh, emotional and exciting. Larry Kasdan and uh, his son, John, um, who, who um, uh, have, I think, a, a, an innate sense of the fun, um, the heartache, um, the physicality, uh, and uh, and and even sometimes the, the 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 hilarious awkwardness of Han Solo, and they really brought it to the page in a detailed way that moves the character front and center, and that's what was exciting to me. Is uh, you know this is this is a movie about. Um, this this amazing uh, journey, this rite of passage of this this important legendary um, character in 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 cinema, Han Solo. Lando is first and foremost just incredibly cool, but but there's that twinkle in his eye. He's funny. He's entertaining. Incredibly handsome, charismatic, and you you just know he's playing his cards close to the vest. That there's there's more to that guy. Than, um, than we've ever been allowed to see before. Donald Glover, uh, who you know, grew up loving what Billy Dee Williams did with Lando, and uh, he was honored to, to, to be able to dig a little deeper, show us a little more, let us see the younger version, um, l let us understand uh, you know, and, and, and have a little better insight into what makes, what makes him tick, what are, what are his other abilities. And, uh, uh, it's a terrific role, and um, and and Donald just you know um, brought brought it.
brought it to the screen with with such enthusiasm and commitment. He's a very creative guy, uh, and yet with tremendous respect for his sense of of who Lando was and what he you know and what he meant to the movies uh, and to pop culture. Phoebe, who plays uh, L three, is such an inventive, improvisational uh, talent and so funny. A terrific writer in her in, in you know on her own. And I know that the Kazans just uh, uh, you know adored what she was able to to bring to the character. And uh, and in directing her, you know, I was I was always looking for uh, you know the the takes that 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 took advantage of the script as written, and then went a little further and tested and pushed uh, Phoebe to see where else she could take the character. And often it was, uh, it was, it was into some very, uh, some very funny head spaces. Tandy is incredibly uh, charismatic uh, and, and also has a, a, a kind of presence and, a, and, a, and, and strength that uh, is not acting. Uh, you know, Tandy is, uh, is, is extremely intelligent, incredibly gracious, wildly talented, but, but uh, nobody's pushover. And she lives by, um, you know, a, a code of, of ethics and principles that are very admirable. And she brought that kind of strength of character uh, and honor to, um, to uh, Val. One thing that I would say about, about Beckett, about Val, about Rio, is that we do see that um, there is honor among thieves. Um, there is also dishonor. It's a paradox, but um, but within it, these relationships are as complicated and as as loaded uh, with the possibility of real human connection and love, but also um, you know danger, uh, betrayal, and disappointment. And so a lot of of what long. A lot of what Han is going to learn about the complexity of the world and the pain of, um, of, of loss and, and betrayal and disappointment comes from this, this relationship with this gang uh, of outlaws and, and his belief that they're going to be the key to his freedom. Um, and in a way they are and in a way they certainly can never be. To divert auxiliary power to the rear deflector shield. We definitely do. Since when do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great. Till we get in. I'll help Lando. The chemistry they had was just fantastic, and I think they both, um, I think they both uh, have fantastic skills with improvisation. And you can see every time they were on camera together, they're literally kind of lifting each other up and uh, sparring almost. Um, and you know, Donald obviously is a writer in his own right um, and incredibly uh, successful with uh, Atlanta. And to have the ability in the moment to be able to improvise and to tweet lines um, is something that we'd always been looking for. And I think Donald does that um, just fantastically. And I think, uh, I say Donald and Alden together, it is uh, it is like sparring and you can just feel that energy rising. And um, he literally just blew us all away. Larry's favorite character, it's no secret, uh, in the Star Wars universe is Han Solo. And it was the one character he said he would be tempted to come back to, uh, to Star Wars um, and write a movie about. Um, John Kasdan has obviously grown up with Star Wars um, and grown up, uh, you know, seeing Larry create some of these amazing iconic characters. And I think what John brings to it is um, is a contemporary uh, a contemporary structure and um, and I think some co other contemporary characters. What Larry brings, I've never seen anyone else do to the same level, is the voice of Han Solo. Bradford's work, I think, is absolutely incredible. He truly is an artist. 
And for me, he's somebody who, he lights by instinct. He lights by how he feels looking at that particular scene or that particular shot. Um, and there's just, there's just something that's really heartfelt about his work. Um, and I'm so excited by what he's done on this film. I really think it's going to blow people away. I'm going to be a pilot. Best in the galaxy. <laughs> I like this kid. Heard about a job. Big shot gangster putting together a crew. We need an incredibly fast ship. And a brilliant pilot. We've got the pilot. Punch it! The real question is, who's going to be my co-pilot? Solo, a Star Wars story. They anticipate your opponent. No, you can't wipe them off. They're holograms. She's so calm. She just, nothing phases her. I mean, really, even when she's, uh, you know, in the most threatening situation, she just remains calm. She's incredibly sure of herself. I mean, it's helpful when you're an expert in explosive devices and you have a number of them all over your body. Um, she, she just knows how to protect herself and her team. And she also knows how to manipulate an environment so that they can work their way, you know, to, to forward to their goals. Um, she can manipulate huge areas of rock, huge pieces of landscape with these devices that she has. Um, so yeah, she's definitely someone you want at your side because she's, um, she's an expert in, in, in moving you forward. I think Beckett has a huge influence on who Han becomes. Um, Beckett kind of takes Han under his wing. There's obviously something in Han Solo that appeals to Beckett, and I think that it's the it's Han's desire to to forge ahead and conduct his um, business based on what he wants and based on his freedom. I think all of them are really looking to assert their their you know their freedom and to to, to carve out a future for themselves that that is, you know, that isn't about oppression, that isn't about towing the line in any kind of, you know, conservative sense. Um, they're all, you know, they're all outsiders, all of them. And I think that Beckett is, uh, you know, finds that appealing in Han. And also Han's like a puppy biting at your heels. He just will not take no for an answer. And that's, you know, that's irresistible. Woody is just a breath of fresh air every moment. The way he delivers a line, the way he moves, the way he interprets the character. He just brings, um, he brings the unexpected to everything that he does. I think sometimes he surprises even himself. He's very free, very instinctive. Um, and it's lovely working with someone uh, like that because every moment is an opportunity to just to, to really bring every ounce of your best self, your best energy to the work that you do, because he does that. Um, and he's also the best fun and kind, kind, and, and he is the first person to, uh, to laugh at himself, which, you know, for a massive movie star like, like him is, is um, it's quite humbling. This is a Star Wars film about Rebels on the Run. One of the things that struck me was that this film had to be natural. It had to be about characters putting their feet on natural surfaces. And so I just felt like everything had to be coming from the right place, whether it be where the camera was placed, whether it be where the lighting was coming from, it all had to feel legitimate. Let's go! Bradford is a tremendous artist. He has a fantastic style. And visually, he builds from character and story. I think the beauty of Star Wars is that you don't want to try too hard. The simple, strong looks always work better. We start in a world that is quite dark. This film brightens as the film goes on. And so do the creatures, the aliens, even the type of droids. So glad we took this job! That droid. I definitely have the best clothes, I think. From the capes to the boots to the style, everything's really cool. This particular film has been the most costumes we've ever produced for a Star Wars film. We've made over a thousand costumes for this. You look phenomenal. Well, I knew I was going to see you. This is beautiful. This is such an incredible piece of work. 
It's a phenomenal script. It really is just a phenomenal script. And I, from the first time I read it to the second time I read it to the third time, I, it just progressively got better and better. So, you know, I was talking about Ron being a master, but these these guys are true masters of their craft too. And I just think it's a, just such a cool story and there's a lot of humor and there's a lot of excitement and they know this universe better than anybody. That word mentor has been used uh, in describing my character, but I don't know. It's, I think it's, in the, it's kind of similar to me and my kids. I'm a great example of what not to do. On the other hand, if you're going to be a criminal, I'm a good example of some of the codes you got to live by. <laughs> so I think some of those rub off on Han. Phoebe is amazing. The, the humor she's brought to this part and this character is going to be memorable. She, she kind of, I mean, I should be a little more annoyed with her because she comes into every scene and essentially steals it and just comes up with all kinds of great stuff that, uh, that stays in the film because it's just so good. She's a really richly funny lady. I think my favorite moments are just uh, when, you know, we've had scenes where all of us were involved, and it really is, you know, you got like Donald, Phoebe, Yono, Amelia, uh, Alden, and all of us kind of cutting up together has been just, I mean, really big laughs. So I always think that you know, when people watch movies, I always think, God, I wish they could see some of the stuff that that isn't represented on film, things that happen in between takes, you know, funny moments. And uh, there have been quite a lot of them. So I love hanging with these guys and uh, playing with these guys. I can't really call it work. Uh, and... I think that's been my favorite part about it. And Ron also has contributed quite a lot on that score, you know, because he's not a heavy-handed director. He's one who can get in there and mix it up and have fun and tell stories. And uh, so I think that's the thing I'll miss the most is uh, just hanging with this gang, you know, laughing. Hey, kid. I'm putting together a crew. Who are these guys? On Solo, Lando Carazin. You look good. You in? That's yes. You might wanna buckle up, baby. How'd they do that? Did they fly it in? It's absolutely mad. Woo! It's all about fun. It's all about fans. Tonight we're finally getting to share it with some fans. This is something I've been waiting for for a long time, and I'm very, very pumped. Han is a character that is so loved, and so taking it on is scary, but I know we've done it justice. It's great to do a movie that's on this scale but that has the kind of heart and the kind of genuine connection that people have to this story. It's kind of like a dream. Lando was my first toy ever. Being a part of this, being part of Star Wars family, it means like the world. I never thought this opportunity would happen, but it's great to be a part of it. This is a story that takes advantage of everything that we've learned about this great iconic character and yet still surprise audiences. It's so exhilarating, it's just insane. In the movie, the energy that's right through the film is this sense of excitement and reverence for a character that is so beloved. Our particular Star Wars posse is such an incredibly talented and interesting group of people. Like, why don't people wear capes anymore? I understand maybe it's a little hard to get your hands out, but they look so fresh. <laughs> I can't wait to hear an audience with this movie and go on this journey with young Han Solo, this defining adventure.
it's so great. It's so exciting. It's been a couple years of working on it, and it feels wonderful to finally get to show it to fans. It's just wonderful, you know, doing all the scenes with Chewie and everything was great, and you really felt like you were really a part of the Star Wars world, and he's very funny, Jonas, who plays Chewie, and um, yeah, it was wonderful. We had a great time. I think just the, the cast that we have and the crew, I mean, the people that I got to make it with and our particular Star Wars posse in this one is such an incredibly talented and interesting group of people. And so getting to have that experience with them was really great. And it's also fun. All my, my uh, nieces and nephews are all here, which is exciting. So they're having the time of their lives. Um, it's kind of like a dream. Um... You know, I, uh, Lando was my first toy ever. Like, my dad bought it for me. So being a part of this, being part of the Star Wars family, it means, it means like, the world. You know, because I, I, and, and I, don't, I don't say that lightly. You know, I'm a fan myself, so I appreciate all the fans. I appreciate how much people care about it. And, like, you know, I just wanted to, you just want to make a, a good movie and, and have fun with the people in it. So, like, I, it just feels great. It's like a dream. Oh yeah, I was telling I was like, the best part about this movie is that no one else can fit the, the suits I was wearing. There's a suit at the end of this movie that I'm like, I would wear that out. It's like kind of, it's, it's all white, I love it, but it, I would wear it out. Like it's, it's, it's nice having all of those capes. And also you start to fall in love with capes in general. I'm like, why don't people wear capes anymore? I understand maybe it's a little hard to get your hands out, but they look so fresh. You really can't top a, a good cape. I just love the way it looks. It feels like a very edgy film, and I feel like there's enough there to satisfy like anybody who's ever wondered about Han and Lando. You know, and uh, you know, there's there's so much about Han in this movie that you know you start you you connect with that I, I with anybody who's young and you're starting to figure it out. So I just hope that people really connect and like they're they're interested in this world because I would love to be a part of this world again. It's really great. Yeah, the film experience with other people in a dark room is like there's nothing like it. You know, it's there's it, it, there's a there's a surprise and a shock you're just not gonna get alone. You know, on a small screen, it, it's 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 a communal experience. Like it's an event. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's it, it's so exhilarating. It's just insane. You kind of you get these like different waves of realizing you're in a Star Wars movie. First of all, they give you the job, and you're like, oh my god, I'm in a Star Wars movie. And then you get on set for the first time and you're like, oh my god, I'm in a Star Wars movie. And then suddenly you're here and it's a press sign, the song, and then the Oscars. And you're like, I'm in a Star Wars movie. <laughs> and it's like these different stages of like overwhelming <laughs> kind of intensity that kind of comes with this. And I just, um, I just really hope we've done the fans proud. I know it's just really, it's scary in one sense because it's so loved and it's so precious. and. Han is a character that is so loved by me, by everyone, by the world of Star Wars. And so taking it on is scary, but I know we've done it justice. And when I first read the script, I was just tingling with excitement because everything just makes sense. And you're like, yes. So it's just really satisfying. It's just really kind of, yeah, it was a, it's a beautiful thing to be a part of. And I'm really, really very lucky to be standing here today. Three adjectives, explosive, dynamic, and heartfelt. Yeah, 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 no, it's interesting. I've been looking at the posters and trying to figure out what we're gonna learn, you know. I, don't, I haven't read anything about it. I'm not, I don't go on sites and read all the speculation and gossip, I just waited to see tonight. So we'll see how it goes. No, no, it's always great. And it's nice to be, uh, having been part of the, the this sort of, um, legend myself it's nice to come and be and, and see this one yeah i've enjoyed the new ones very much so it's been good nissan is so excited to once again join forces with lucasfilm for our third our trilogy completing tonight was solo and we brought a brand new rogue show vehicle the most important vehicle in our lineup modeled after the most important vehicle in the Star Wars universe, the Millennium Falcon, and it is decked out inside and out to celebrate for our fans and the world premiere tonight. This is pretty amazing. We've reimagined what a Rogue can be, Nissan's best-selling uh, vehicle, 
and we've worked together with the special effects artists at Lucasfilm and Vehicle Effects to recreate what this rogue would look like, representing the Millennium Falcon, all the bells and features, even the dice in the mirror. Uh, we're getting it to come to life right here on the carpet. You can see it go into hyperspace. So really exciting. We're so excited to be here on the red carpet, bringing to life Nissan and Solo for our fans. It's about celebrating our technology that's in our cars, bringing it to life in a way that's future forward, that's showcasing just exactly what it means to have a co-pilot on board with Nissan Intelligent Mobility. One of the themes of the co-pilot, of course, Han and Chewie in this movie, we're celebrating that together and the energy is here, it's exciting, the fans are out, the stars are out, and of course we've got this incredible show vehicle right here at the front of the red carpet. Well, this one's particularly uh, exciting because really, you know, you're a six-year-old and you're imagining the rest of your life and you still don't quite actually believe you'll finally get to do a Star Wars film, you know. Yep, there's a, there's a friendship theme really between Han and Chewie. There's also a friendship theme, you know, a gang theme, a, a belonging theme for Beckett. And there's a love theme for Gira, but is it really love? And that's what we were trying to do in the whole film, is question, you know, what is love, what is friendship, and uh, what, what love will last. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to be actually be uh, in front of the camera, if you could call it that, because I'm all digital. I play Rio Durant, who's, uh, who's an alien, but, uh, but I'm having a good time and uh, been friends with Ron Howard for a long time. So when I got the call, I was very excited. And it's been my, I think, third collaboration with Donald Glover between this and Lion King and uh, Spider-Man so uh, that that's that's fun too it's kind of fun my life's a little surreal between all the Marvel stuff that I've seen on Hollywood Boulevard and all the Star Wars stuff it's it's uh, I don't know that I would believe it if I could went in a time machine and told myself as a as a kid that this is what my my career would be and my adult life so I'm I have to say I'm having a really really fun time yeah, it's a story that's never been seen, and uh, and uh, I can't. Uh, I when I when I went into this, my, all my uh, expectations were I couldn't. I didn't know what to expect, and the uh, script surprised me in such ways, and I can't wait to see how it unfolds on the screen because it's a wonderful adventure story. It's fun, and I think people are really gonna walk away uh, surprised. Well, I think people know what to uh, what what, the, what what makes these two characters. Uh, bond together so well, but do they know what? How did they get their start? Do they know how did that evolve into what it was? No, it's so it is so exciting. We're gonna see how Han met Chewie, and I think a lot of people are wondering how that all happened. So it's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. You know, I think what it is is it's just a great fun time at the movies. That's what this story really is, and I think that they're going to make little discoveries along the way, but they're really going to love the relationships in the movie. It is, you know, the thing is that I got to work with Larry Kasdan, who had done Empire Strikes Back and Jedi, and he worked with his son on this movie, John Kasdan. So I think that was one of the most enjoyable things, because Larry really knows the story and he really knows the characters. So we were finding lots of little new details that we could put in this film. I think there's nothing better than to see what we do with an audience. It's one of the great things as filmmakers is that we get a chance to see people react to what we've done. And there's, I, I love that more than anything. So I'm really excited to get into the theater and see people experience this. It's pretty cool. It's very cool because he's the coolest character. Always has been. And uh, I think uh, it, people are going to like it. It's nice to see this part of his life. Yeah, and it's got a freedom to be a different kind of Star Wars movie than you've seen before. It is. And, you know, he's not going up against the Empire exactly. He's got some different kind of enemies, so it's fun. Yes. I mean, I've lived with it my whole life. He's been a part of it for so long, and it still takes our breath away every time one of these movies rolls around, how much excitement there is. You know, how much you walk around the city and see t-shirts everywhere you go. They're just, it's a part of the culture like nothing else. I, I've been thinking about this recently. I think the, the, the reason why the, it's such a good idea for the franchise to, um, to have these spin-offs these spin and these standalones 
because it really enriches, I, I think, the entire franchise. But because they're, a, they're, they're, they're less encumbered by uh, the, 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 the responsibilities that the main franchise has and that they can be more playful and uh, they, 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 there can be more sort of um, uh, caper-like qualities and they can be escapades. I think everyone, there's, you can't help but be intrigued about what created these people and, the, and those friendships. I think what was so beautiful about the films in the first place is they just jumped straight in. You, you just have this un, untold history and that's just given this, opportunity, this wonderful opportunity to be able to go back and have a, you know, have a little bath in what happened before, which is exactly what these films are. But there's such, there's, it's such an adventure tale and um, there's so much love and heart uh, in it. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to break people's hearts and warm, warm the cockles for everyone. Yeah, she's wicked. She's wicked. She's um, yeah. I was I was so thrilled to read the script because she is. A, she's got such an amazing attitude. She's pugnacious. She's argumentative. She's got her own opinion. She built herself out of other droids. I mean, that's insane in itself. And she's um, she's actually really inspirational. I carry a little bit of L3 with me everywhere I go now. Oh my God, so much. I think there's so many unique relationships in this film outside of the central one that we know about. But there's so much imagination and love has gone into what makes these partnerships work. Um, literally partners in crime, but also it's a very romantic film actually, I think from a friendship point of view and from a romantic point of view. I think it's gonna really steal people's hearts. And, you know, it, it makes so much sense for this movie it, because, you know, it's, it's, all, it's, it's, trying, it's all about fun, it's all about fans. Tonight we're finally getting to share it with some fans. This is something I've been waiting for for a long time and I'm very, very pumped. Well, this story was something that, that Larry Kazin dreamed of writing. This is the fourth Star Wars movie that he's written on, but this is the one he's been dying to do for years. Long before Disney acquired Lucasfilm or any of those things, this is a story that he believed was something to really offer fans that would take advantage of, of everything that we've learned about this great iconic character and yet still surprise audiences. And, uh, and, and so I think it's a, it's a terrific adventure story and I was really, really thrilled to be a part of it. I think, the, I think that su there are twists and turns that are unexpected. I think the relationships in this movie, in, in addition to the action and the excitement and that drama, I think the relationships are, you know, they're, 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 there's heart, there's, there's a lot of humor and comedy. I can't wait to hear an audience laugh with this movie in the way that I think that they uh, will. And go on this journey with young Han Solo, this defining uh, adventure. So I think there are a lot of surprises in store for the audience. It's, it's a privilege. It's a privilege, it's a thrill. It makes my kids really happy. They are very proud of me and actually want to come and see it. Well, they can come and see a movie I do. Um, finally so but, you know what what a privilege and what a celebration too to have a woman of color who's got a you know a, a principal role in the movie um, in that entire Star Wars legacy that hasn't actually happened until now so I I feel you know I feel very kind of proud for that to be a moment that I can represent so you know it's 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 very special well I think you know it, it you can really tell in the movie the energy that's right through the film is this sense of excitement and reverence for a character that is so beloved. Right down to the design of the costumes, you know, that fantastic retro edge, which is so, you know, so akin to the character that we know of Harrison Ford. And I think that really that was sort of, it, it, it was delivered right through the whole production. And we all had so much fun because Han is a, a, a rogue. Uh, he's, he's devil may care, he's irreverent. He takes risks. He's all the things that people want to be, but they're too scared to be. So, you know, I think that it gave everyone the sense that they could try something new and, and depart from the everyday and the normal. And I, it, honestly, it's right through everything in the movie. I mean, it's really exciting. Naturally, you, I mean, you wouldn't expect it, uh, but uh, I was uh, alive in the 70s, and uh, I remember very well when what a big deal it was uh, at the time when this Star Wars originally came out and uh, so I guess I never thought this opportunity would happen but it's great to be a part of this you know it's just one of the funnest experiences I've, I've ever had uh, working with this group um, and I don't know I haven't seen it yet but I hear it's a pretty good movie 
Yeah, I didn't expect to see the Millennium Falcon on, uh, you know, Hollywood Boulevard. That's pretty cool. You're after something. Is it revenge? Money? Or is it something else? You look good. A little rough around the edges, but good. Heard about a job. Big shot gangster putting together a crew. I'm a driver, and I'm a flyer. I waited a long time for a shot like this. What do you think? Uh, well, what do you know? You got a line on a ship? Yeah, I know a guy. He's the best smuggler around. I heard a story about you. I was wondering if it's true. Everything you've heard about me is true. <laughs> L3! Let's go with a mean man's face. Who are these guys? If you come with us, you're in this life for good. You might wanna buckle up, baby. Here they come! Let me give you some advice. We assume everyone will betray you. And you will never be disappointed. I got a really good feeling about this. Since when do you know how to fly? <laughs> 190 years old? You look great. Push it! 